Again is the evil spirit and seek the mercy of Almighty. And I send the best of the Darud Salwar to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Dear friends, today we are talking on a topic which became important not because of a pandemic going on in the world for the last six months but it is something which has been very important for long but has not been taken due note of. Unfortunately we find in the world around so many people, they die and they die unattended. The result is a large number of orphans and when young die, the result is a large number of unsupported senior citizens and then people when seen around helpless, then we are surprised. What is surprising is that we have advanced a lot in the knowledge of science, technology, medical technology, knowledge of science, but still we are not able to give the help to the needy people whenever it could have been done. I am not saying that your hand has to extend beyond the hand of the Creator, no. But one most important thing with which the human being has been blessed by the Creator is knowledge. And that was the thing which was told by Almighty at the creation of Adam to the angels that what he possesses is knowledge. And that knowledge is not merely to be manifested but that knowledge has to be used and utilized for the best of the humanity, for the best of any creation, and for the best of the universe. My question is that when I confine myself to the field of medicine, that why, why the knowledge which is possessed by the people why is it not used the best for them? And that's how I am coming to it. And when I said it's not today's problem, it has been problem for centuries. When we look to the Babylonian codes, and we find there also something is provided there in writing about the conduct of the people who are dealing with medicine. We come later on to the Norman period, we find still there is something about it. And when we find that Norman conquest of England itself, we find there is still extension of some norms about ethics and medical law to those areas. And when we come to the 15th, 16th century America, and then 18th century, century America, we find there are the problems of medical. And then when we look in our own country, we find that there have been the issues and problems of medical. And then they became aggravated during the period when we were faced with a very strange, a new kind of novel kind of epidemic today. My dear friends, on the one side, there has been truly the absence of medical ethics in a big way. But on the other hand, 
the good spirits have also been always at a move and they have been somewhere making the laws somewhere providing for the ethics that the best comes out of the people out of the professional and that's why we find somewhere the laws and somewhere we find the ethics here i may say that when we make a law and then with sanctions and then we want to enforce it by a machinery we talk of a law and it has its own limitations but why i talk of ethics it's more dear to me because it is self regulating and there can be a difference between the two mark the best if we take the words from dr iqbal when he tells to almighty allah that i request you kindly forgive my sins and if it becomes necessary that you take an account of it do it but kindly hide it from the sight of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is not afraid of hell he is not afraid of legal action he is not afraid of coarseness but he is only saying that let mustafa not see my sins that's it is it's something which is very important it is self regulating a human being out of his own endeavor wish desire comes forward and offers him to the humanity that i shall do it and so is the legal profession see so is the um, engineering profession so is any other profession and the most important of it is the medical profession because the object in the hands of a medical doctor is a human body it's a life that's in its hands how much cautious he must be how much careful he must be how much uh, you know absorbed he must be and how much result oriented he must be and then definitely we can see that it's very important in the tradition of this uh, medical ethics you find that there have been different kinds of oaths being administered by various medical colleges and universities to their products as we call that the hippocratic oath it is not the oath of hippocracy it is the hippocratic oath that means there was some famous physician in greek and he is known for his performance and that's why they have dubbed it as the hippocratic oath and here we can uh, i i request uh, uh this uh, the operator please play uh, the video uh, that will show us that how this practice is still going on look to its importance uh, that how some universities they are still all giving that oath to the products their doctors who are they producing uh, and then you can see that how important it is uh, and that oath is uh, basically which is an important part of international code of medical ethics uh, this international code of medical ethics it's not merely one fragment it's a combination of many but we have at the global level world medical association and that world medical association that is basically uh, adopting different kinds of resolutions different kinds of statements different kinds of policies so that the medical profession and medical professionals they maintain at least the minimum standard of ethics while performing their professional activities and uh, uh, that's uh, how uh, if there is any difficulty in playing it then huh? mr president and vice chancellor i now invite a representative of those whom you have admitted today to the degrees of bachelor of medicine and bachelor of surgery to come forward to the platform in order that he may lead them in the affirmation of the declaration of geneva for those wanting to follow this the declaration is inside the back cover of the program
Will all graduates in the degrees of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery please stand? Please say with me, at the time of being admitted as a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge to consecrate my life to the service of humanity. I will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity. The health of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the secrets that are confided in me, even after the patient has died. I will maintain by all the means in my power the honour and the noble traditions of the medical profession. My colleagues, sisters and brothers, I will not permit considerations of age, disease, disability, greed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing or any other factor to intervene between GC and my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I make these promises solemnly, freely and upon my honour. Please repeat after me. At the time of being admitted as a member of the medical profession, at the time of being admitted as a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity. I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity. The health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not permit considerations of age, disease or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will respect the secrets that are confided in me even after the patient has died. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity in accordance with good medical practice. I will foster the honor and noble traditions of the medical profession. I will give to my teachers, colleagues, and students the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will share my medical knowledge for the benefit of the patient and the advancement of health care. I will attend to my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standard. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. Even under threat. I make these promises. I make these promises. I make these promises solemnly. Solemnly. Freely. Freely. And upon my honor. Friends, I, I will explain uh, what it was. Uh, what I was trying to say is uh, that world is moving ahead, knowledge is increasing, and then human being is, uh, you know, well equipped with uh, all these kinds of technologies, uh, but humanity is not getting its benefit that much. And the worst is that human knowledge which we have gathered it has to be ensured that it's used for the benefit of humanity and it's not used against the humanity. And one of the lines in this uh, oath which is being administered uh, uh, to, to the people, to the new professionals every year in different medical colleges, uh, maybe that must be the practice in India also, uh, that how much impact of it is there. Uh, and here I may also uh, give one of the glaring examples, you know, uh, and th that became, uh, you know, very much clear in Nazi Germany, 
when knowledge was not used for the benefit of the human being the knowledge was used to harm the human being the technology was used to harm the human being the knowledge of biosciences which somebody was chemical sciences others was possessed and the medical doctors which they had gathered the knowledge that was not used for the benefit of humanity what could have prevented him at that time to misuse the knowledge i think that should have been only the ethics had there been a very strong ethic ethics in uh, present in a human being that would have stopped it and today also we may count that whenever the law is failing or when law is turning adverse ethics is the only hope that's why i am giving importance to it that there is a need to strengthen the ethics among us any professional and more so among us the professionals of medicine because they are dealing with the human body somebody's son somebody's daughter somebody's wife somebody's hus husband somebody's sister somebody's brother and somebody's parents somebody's children and when you are not attending you are leaving someone without children you are leaving someone without a spouse you are leaving someone without a parent and you are leaving many without a support they were to have on the other side dear friends uh, i i i would say uh, that this became very important after the second world war and that's why a geneva declaration was adopted and wherein uh, the various steps were taken and various inclusions were made in a document that document came to be known as the international uh, this code of medical ethics and in that most important is the oath which was administered which is being administered in your side and i would like to uh, have some kind of explanation of it Uh, so that we uh, we uh, you know uh, uh, imbibe it better uh, we internalize it better and then we can talk to others also to internalize it the first line it is i solemnly pledge to consecrate my life to the service of humanity i solemnly take the pledge to consecrate my life to the service of humanity here i am emphasizing the word consecrate and that can be when chairman was talking of the god allah and others consecrate will mean that you are putting yourself in consonance with that whatever is your faith you are really putting yourself into it and that's how i say that when a person expresses himself it's not merely by words you are expressing yourself by your conduct and that conduct is basically the real reflection of your faith if you say i am the savior of humanity but by your conduct you are killing people that is your real reflection <laughs> here you are not consecrating yourself with the lord or god in whom you believe there is the important point my dear medical doctors my dear engineers my dear politicians my dear social activists expression is your conduct and in the constitution of india or in the uh, international bill of rights you have freedom of expression and you are offered that i must be allowed to speak 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 yes speak but at the same time you are conduct a master speak and what's that conduct and that is a reflect of your ethics how much if you believe in some prophet how much you have consecrated yourself with that if you believe in any book how much you have consecrated yourself with that and then if you believe in any any ideal or ideal individual or person or whoever how much you have consecrated yourself with that and i believe that this is something very important that every human being on this globe must know so that he can judge another person that how much truthful he is how much honest he is and how much he can be honest and how much he can be you know useful and how much he can be harmful and that is one can see i i have taken this time the medical profession you can you must find in a medical doctor a savior you must not find someone that you are afraid of him that he will be charging so much of the fee i don't know if he is happy with this and that's why you find common mistakes taking place there is incorrect medicine being uh, administered there is incorrect diagnosis so many problems are there there are surgical mistakes which are taking place uh, here and there 
and that's why we find many people absent from duties and so extends to many many things uh, that become the things for doctors market work you know that you i think this market situation has to be realized please yoga bhai yoga bhai that you have consecrated yourself with your projection and that's wo hai na masjid bahut badi masjid unki ahli hadith wali he must be knowing and concentrating himself uh, with with that kind of uh, uh, you know professional requirement here i may say uh, that uh, we have as we are always talking of the constitution constitutionalism constitutional values and that's you know uh, that's the truth only when you definitely dedicate yourself you consecrate yourself your heart vibrates with the values enshrined in the constitution when your uh, conduct is reflecting what is provided in the constitution when you are always on the track to find and establish the objectives of the constitution so must be the medical professional that when you are dealing with a human body where your mind is and uh, 20 years before somebody asked me a question that how will you measure the medical ethics of a professional how will you measure it i didn't have my answer but i had heard it from my mother maybe she had heard from others i said that when a medical doctor will be attending a pregnant woman he must be so much absorbed in the safety of the child safety of the of the lady that he must never have even an inkling of it that how the child was conceived that should be the level of sensitivity that should be the level of concern about the safety uh, of of the human being whom the doctor is dealing with and that's basically that when we are after law we are at a lower standard when we are at ethics we are at a higher standard nobody you are not afraid of anybody you are only saying that tomorrow the question may be asked to me by almighty tomorrow the sin may be shown to prophet muhammad how can i answer him how can i reply i was the rahmatan lil alamin and you were a negligent medical doctor how did you do it you could you could not afford to do it where is your ethics what sort of ethics you are showing it what sort of paigam you gave to the world as my follower so i would say that whoever has shaped this you know oh you have to you have to believe yourself to read it very seriously they have to inculcate it they have to take it it in true spirit and then develop into a very good medical professional here i may tell you i i, I can i can tell you that when we uh, you know read that uh, surah khalaqnal insana min ahsan taqwi that i have produced the human being out of the best of the mold and but at the same time allah says what khalaqal insana uh, this uh, 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 anybody can remind me asan tatmin summa radad nawas tala safli that you can be put in appreciation to the lowest of the things for what you have elevated yourself as a medical doctor you have elevated yourself as a medical professor you have elevated yourself as the highest professional but then and that was possible only because allah has created you from the best of the mold now think for a moment if you are a wise person if you are really possessing morality and ethics if you are honest to yourself if you are a friend of your own self then you must not allow anybody to get down from that and allah tells you you will be thrown down you will be thrown down i shall throw you down when you will not maintain that the best from which i have created you here is the point of ethics here is the point of consecration with that with the excellence uh, with the concern with the human element and that is where allah says wala kat karamna bani adam here is the respect you have to maintain it he created you but you have to maintain it that is the quranic value that is the value which you have to maintain that's what you have to understand that's for everybody and that's what i am trying to say that this is lost this is not present there and that's why it has become the service is very good you have to sustain yourself but at the same time it can not be made totally 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 a commodity and unfortunately the governments of the world today they have gone for privatization and you have to come out with a very hefty amount to get an admission in our 
but i think the medical professionals are the best of the people who can overcome that problem and they can say we are for the service of humanity we are not to make it a business we are not to make it a market kind of thing we will provide the service and that needs a very strong kind of medical staff and then the people have to also understand that how they have to respect the medical profession and then only you can have the best of the medical professionals available there that's the element of ethics in that and then dear friends uh, when we look to it uh, that it has various uh, other dimensions uh, and presently it has become very difficult for uh, for the people uh, to maintain the dignity and conscience uh, uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, and 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 this uh, this is a, this is this is a question that in the digitized world everybody's information is so open anybody can have it when there is the matter of confidentiality a patient comes to a medical doctor and almost surrenders but the doctor is exploiting doctor is compromising and he is also giving the confidential information to the people otherwise and that becomes very harmful and that becomes you know Uh, rather than becoming a remedy a source of remedy going to a medical doctor becomes a uh, a source of threat and that's how the, this uh, this uh, the pledge which is taken by the medical doctors somewhere in certain colleges that has to be taken very seriously that you are making a pledge you are answerable for that to your conscience at least if they if you can avoid the state legal action as as we find in certain developed countries 70% of the medical doctors are under litigation because they have lost their ethics and they are not following it and then here is the answer that no legal system can meet 70% of the litigation of medical doctors can see compiling of the case and all that but ethics can do it that's why ethics becomes very important and that's why the ideal is become very important that's why the clear understanding of things becomes very important and that's why the belief becomes very important because you cannot sustain a good ethics without a clear belief in anything whatever you believe maybe your conscience nature or god or whatever it may be so dear friends at the same time in the world we find another different difficult situation in the fire that we found in some country a black man is killing a white man and a white man is killing a black man then in such a situation what should what will be the behavior of the medical doctors who will see it who will have be a witness of it who will prosecute them is it possible no it's not possible no witness then wrong is going on it can't be prosecuted it can't be processed then what is the remedy the remedy is ethics we have to stand by the ethics and when we look to the different source of knowledge that whether there is anywhere strong ethics we should be followed and i am sorry to say i am not doing it i am not saying it because i am a muslim but i am saying it on the basis of very objective studies that the message given by prophet muhammad to the humanity is very strong about promoting ethics about promoting human nature in its true nature about promoting the systems which will be self regulatory and need least support from enforcement agencies and all that but alas at the same time i'll say that now there come certain examples at where we find that people have uh, started not giving that much importance to it in our tradition in muslim tradition in purani tradition the best is the sacrifice you can not you know if there is a faith without sacrifice that's a very difficult kind of thing you have to sacrifice your time you have to sacrifice your air in this uh, energy you have to sacrifice your money you have to sacrifice your more money and wealth but you have to earn something 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 that is wala kat karna bani yaad that god has given respect to this human being in my hands and i am treating the same human being and this god are my hands the hands of the god is my mind with god is my understanding with god have i got the mercy which god wants me to have there it is that kind of ethics
that is required. And then only this play, which is taken in different universities, can be a truer one. And then it can be the same kind of connotation can be seen in other faiths and other divine books or other kinds of writings of wise men and wise people that the object should be the promotion of that kind of the faiths, their friends. I would say that one more thing which is important is that ethics for anything will start from home. Ethics for anybody will start from school. That's why here it's written that I shall respect the teacher and I shall give dignity to my student. It is a behavior. Ethics ultimately a behavior. If somebody is not behaving it in at home, if somebody is not developing that kind of behavior in education during education, then definitely at that time we the humanity will be a failure. And that's why in any education policy there must be a very strong bond of human friendliness, equality among us the human beings, equal treatment among us the human beings. There should not be any other consideration. And if they are there, then you are mutilating and you are defiling what we call ethics. And whatever is Antonian of it, you are fully loading the mind of the student with those unethical considerations, with bias, with aggression, with aggressiveness. And that's, uh, you know, that is to be seen that how ethics has to be promoted from the very beginning in the future season and then only we can think of it that probably the whole of this medical profession can be a savior of the humanity uh, and otherwise it's not so and challenges are every time and we see that and that's why when these uh, new guys were taking the oath they were talking of it that I will not permit considerations of age, disease, disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing or anything. I shall not allow those things to get into my mind. And then whoever was writing this, you know, hypocritic oath, I think he was influenced by something what was said by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in Maidan e Arafat during his Hajjat al vida that today, please you Sikais be the witness to me, you stones be the witness to me, you sands be the witness to me, you the trees be the witness to me, you the stars be the witness to me. Today I am telling to the humanity that no Arab is superior to a nona, no white is superior to a black, and no black is superior to a... That is the basically thing that it's one humanity, and if there is anybody who needs, he wants more respect, then he has to do it, he has to earn it. And that, that's why we say, in the akramakum, in the Allah akkaakum, the best among us you is going to perform the best. That is the Quranic value. And unfortunately, the Muslims have failed in giving this message to the world. Yes. And they are in, if they are suffering anywhere, they are suffering because of it, because they fight for the protection of their property, for the protection of their status, they are fighting for the protection of their position, their parties and other things, they are not projecting any of the views anywhere that what basically the Islamic ethics is, what Islam is, and what is the message. And that's why they are not able to invoke the support from the corners which are on the opposite side when there is a promise from God that if you are really truly presenting your the message, then you will get the help. And that's why if I if I talk of you know one of the saints known as Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, when, when he was given the title of Muhyiddin, that means reviving the faith, uh, reviving the deen, then he was talking in the same way. You stones, if people are help, not helping me, you the trees, you the plots, you please help me. I want to put at right place the faith of the, 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 the Muhammad Rasulullah What he said, I want to project it. I don't want you the kings of Sanjar, don't be up against me, I am not against you. I have nothing to do with your kingdom. I don't need it. I don't need your wealth. But I am only saying something which has come to me as a message. Why are you torturing me? We the Muslims of the world, we the Quranic people of the world, we are giving a message to the whole of the world. Take away our, our material wealth. Take away everything. But allow us to say that human being is one. Human being is same. 
everybody is to every other person same they are one they are equal they are the creation of the same lord and they have faced the same destiny when a patient is pain whatever religion he belongs to he is suffering the same pain and whenever he is you know suffering from anything whenever he is suffering a murder and death medical murder medical death and then medical problems he is suffering the same this is the message which is in the quran that you are the same you are my creation please allow us to say and all those who are lost in dividing the people among the muslims also religion caste creed color and other things and are not clarifying their message to the world i think they should wake up they should understand and they will be definitely if they don't do it they will be fuel of hell they will be the first fuel of the hell i tell them fearlessly as i am supposed to be you may be saying i have done i have built their mansion that mansion of no help to you because you have not adopted the quranic ethics you are not a friend of a very good person maybe to of another tree you are not friend of any you know oppressed person maybe he is of another tree you are not a very good teacher of the person maybe he is of another tree you are not a very good medical doctor or another person maybe one so dear friends i i say that and that that ethics that faith that inculcation of tricks that is needed to be done and if it is not there you are free. you are free. you are not presenting things correctly you are not understanding the things correctly i know you are busy with answering the questions which have been raised by others to you when you do islamic studies you are busy in answering the unnecessary question which have been raised against you and in that process you are forgetting what you actually have to project and that's you must understand and if there is any other learned person who uh, who has any access to the quranic knowledge he must definitely see that that okay i'll answer other things also but i should not forget what i have to project what is my identity i must not be really uh, put in the in the dock that i have to only answer the questions which have been raised probably if you will present yourself the well those questions will hide they will go again in oblivion and what you are actually projecting and that should be the correct of a medical doctor from the quranic point of view not only from quranic point of view but international code of medical ethics is word by word in accordance with the spirit of the quranic provision that's word by word line by line and meaning by meaning it is in conformity in, in consonance with it but you are not able to explain it you are not able to project it and that's the most unfortunate thing i would like that is taken very seriously and in one area it will start working well i think many problems will be solved my colleagues will be my sisters and brothers how are you you are you know uh, making uh, that what we call uh, uh, that coaching of patients advertising and then you show others your brothers and sister doctors in lower esteem how is it is it ethical no rather you have to cooperate with other uh, you know uh, these doctors you have to cooperate with other physician you have to cooperate with other surgeons and you have to share your excellence delegate knowledge that whoever he is when he will be operating upon or treating a patient he must take my knowledge also you are not there to earn you are yes you are to earn the daulat of iman daulat of being the best in ethics and i think there is no question wealth will automatically come that will flow for you people will come to you and tell you please establish a medical college we are with you because you are the person we want the doctors with this kind of medical ethics we want the nurses with this kind of ethics we want the medical attendants with this kind of ethics kindly establish a college kindly establish an institution i want that they are your reflection they are and and then you will receive definitely you know a, a very good welcome from people of any faith any region that yes he is carrying that ethics which is required and then i would say yes there are examples some are doing that uh, but at the same time uh, most of the people they are uh, unmindful of it they go to the profession just have a worldly worldly kind of you know visage worldly kind of reflection and some kind of showman that way 
so dear friends uh, i think that patient is the guest of allah to any medical doctor he is the guest of allah and then he has to see he has to be when god says i'll ask you on the day of resurrection that why did you come to see me and he will tell him allah how could you be ill and he would say was that that person not ill and here not only a medical doctor should be on toes to see if there are any patients if there are any people who need my care that is the daawat you could do you could do many things in in one go but even when the patient is coming to you you are not treating him as, even then as the guest of god you have to be lost in that and that's how i would say if i tell as most of us are teachers i will tell to them also about ethics we had in this education act of 2009 about the ethics of the teachers but i'll believe that when a parent is sending a student to class he trusts you you have to shape the future of that person and here also i would say when a person hopelessly with disease is coming to a medical doctor he is the guest of lord do you possess that kind of ethics have you ever thought of it that he is a guest of god to me and then have you ever thought of it how allah will treat me that if there is a threat that from ahsan taqwim you may be pushed down to asfal as-safili and you are creating the cause yourselves for that that god created you as ahsan taqwim and you want him to be pushed down to asfal as-safili because you don't treat his guest the way you should treat the guest he has sent you he is in disease this time he is in need of help this time but you could not attend that that's what my one of the very important suggestions is that this medical ethics becomes very important please see that dear friends in the world today most of the people are living with disease most of the people there are problems of you know respiratory reproductive health and so many other problems which some people are not even able to express that's how you know uh, you have to you have to see it that how can we uh, get to the right right you know kind of uh, this uh, approach to medical ethics and then take help uh, from quranic and maybe from the books from other religions as well because they are having direction i take that all these religions they have come in a sequence after one message to another message as god allah says in the quran that i will send messengers to all the people in their with the with messages in their own language and that's how we have put the whole knowledge in the context and that's why if the, there are things there are advices among the other people also that all may be integrated and we can find a better one now this uh, you know uh, this uh, world uh, this uh, a uh, medical association that's doing a lot of things and they are live to things i think that's a very appreciable organization and they have not stopped the things with that they are coming with their anecdotes from time to time statements from time to time for example we had the problem legal problem of euthanasia in that many people they are terminally ill and then you know they want to die even if uh, not a natural death but there they came with some kinds of guidelines that how the medical doctor should behave in it he should not be influenced by anything and it can be misused also many times in this world today even children want a, a premature death of their parents so they get the profit there are many other people who manage want to manage the things in hospital but a medical doctor is a savior he has to stand for the right things and he has to see that this euthanasia is not used uh, as an exploitation tool as a plunder kind of thing they have come with statements about these things and in the same way there is a lot of diabetes now in the world and people are manipulating the things in newspapers and magazines journals and advertisements about many things there come one day it comes that this is good for diabetic another they they say this is this is a very good sweetener this is not a very good sweetener that's all how we can control this media how we can control this advertising false advertising it's only the ethics that's why this world medical legislation in it is international code is coming that kindly adopt this adherence to the code please come with two or messages 
please come with your real dealings of the patients uh, but, and they are with it and we find many many of the you know matrimonial uh, you know what we call them uh, this uh, uh, people die during uh, this uh, you know labor pain and how doctors are attending them you are earning money even if there could be a natural birth you are asking them okay it needs a surgery and you are funding the surgery and getting huge amounts of money from them for an operation and you don't allow a natural birth to take place my dear friends many of the children die they die during birth and that all is because of the negligence of the medical doctor and that's in advertence towards the medical in uh, this uh, medical ethics and so many other kinds of things are existing around in the world where one could meet various challenges by adherence to the medical ethics and this is definitely i agree is a very tough task because world is on a different plane the degeneration of mind the recession towards asphalus safini and then when human being comes down to the plane he turns into a beast he is careless and that he is no who is using his knowledge for what a medical doctor has learned kidney transplantation that's a very good technology that is to be used for saving a patient but they are stealing the kidney of a very well healthy patient also for any reason they ask him to sleep on the the cervical bed and they take away the kidney and you know uh, the person is helpless they use the knowledge for a different purpose and same happens for many many other things and that's how i am trying to lay emphasis on this thing that we should come forward and then see that quran is relevant to you its message is relevant to you its ethics is very important for the world and it is not for the muslims maybe it is adverse to the muslims to the extent that they have to render sacrifice they have to take others and then attend them and then give them a feel that yes we are believers and our reward is not this worldly kind of thing our reward is that god is pleased with us our reward is that we show our adherence to prophet our reward is we show adherence to the quran and that's how you can come forward and do it and then definitely i think that it will be rational it will be having a, a real impact there is much to be said many slides i prepared but at the same time i thought that we must have the presentation of the theme presentation of the idea and presentation of this thing that should one be right to the word which he says those who take the oath or those don't take the oath the certificate is the oath that i have opted for this profession i must follow it and if you don't follow it you are going down to that you may earn the money and you may have five houses and your grandchildren will fight on that and there will be ultimately a murder will be caused by their fight among themselves for the property you have produced and if you are wise then after having five houses you will donate four of them to a medical cause with ethics and say let this be dedicated for promotion of the health of the people let it be dedicated for promotion of the education among the people and let people enjoy it and i need this much and i have enough with me my dedication to my cause to my faith to my commitment i think that's the spirit which is needed to be there i have tried to make things simple and i presented them in a simple way i wanted to present the spirit of it there are so many complexities which can be discussed and that can be done that's a lifelong mission but at the same time i would say that let us understand the scenario let us understand the scenario at least we must come forward with with a message with a campaign that there is definitely need for promotion of medical ethics and norms are given in the international code of medicine the association medical association must follow 
and then all those who are producing our indian this uh, uh, medical council must see that the graduates produced by different colleges they must carry this element of things and if that is done then definitely will have a different world and uh, with these words i would say that god give us the understanding real understanding and make us acceptable to you as your followers and make us acceptable to all in the world as the best performers thank you so much allah bless you. so uh, any uh, you know questions i i always say i don't answer the question but i will respond because my way is to respond i am not arbitrary all what i say i don't claim i am correct you also are correct but we can have the response i'll definitely give a response please come with very difficult question so that i learn something and then i get to another step uh, that will be great of you uh, and, and and this is uh, this is required and be ruthless don't have mercy on me because i want to promote more thank you so much uh, please
So he withdrawn and finally the life was distributed with the two brothers. So ethics is a really very important in every walk of life. Uh, that's why Islam has given full context about the ethical values in every walk of life, whether he is a teacher or a student, parents and children, and the neighbor, etc. Et Whatever comes into the way of life, that's the ethic is having a very, very important role to play. That's why we, the Muslim, must try to present that kind of ethics in, in our behavior, in our attitude, in our dealing, in our action, so that people can understand what kind of uh, Islam is, how this Islam stands for human being, how this Islam stands for developing the human relations on the basis of ethics. That is one, one of the most important. So that, uh, that's why suddenly came in my mind that uh, he told me the long story, so it was a brief part of that. Like I appreciate before our uh, president remarks will come. I really appreciate the wonderful speech you have given. Uh, my request will be that you please prepare this as a, as a book form and it, uh, it will be printed as early as possible and we will try to have the two English, Urdu and Hindi three languages minimum. So first you have to prepare in English and later on the translation will be done. Jazakallah khairan wa khairan jaza. Assalamu alaikum. Dr. Kaleem, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Okay, but yes, yes. There is a question from Ms. Nasser. Is ethics same as Rasul? Wondering. Ethics same to Rasul? Rasul, Rasul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Naz, I, I really appreciate. Okay, great. You see, I, I, I must tell you, uh, then we, when it is the question of ethics, there is no gap between your own self and your faith. Or if you believe in God, in Him, or if you believe in conscience or anything, that is the thing. A soul is when you make it a norm, when you want it to make it for others also. So ethics is the deepest thing. That's the real thing. That's you know that even if there are not any laws, a soul principles around, no, but you are following it. Uh, you know, you know when uh, uh, we have heard of uh, uh, that when uh, you know Hazrat Ali Karamallah uh, when. Uh, he, he was having fast, fasting, many say because uh, his, uh, his children were not well. And, and in the event, he had to go for iftar. And he had one loaf of bread. And at the same time, there came somebody, and then he opted and he gave it to the needy person and remained fasting for another day, for another day, and for third day. That was an elevation of without any caution. That's an inner feeling. That's your own ethics. Your mind dictates. Your faith dictates. And that's why many people say that that was uh, in a, a shani nizul of surah uh, and, and then God found that this was a very good elevation. That is the human elevation. And then Prophet came from his home to Ali. What did you do? That God praised this kind of gesture. What have you done? And that's basically it takes. There is nobody to self regulate you. You uh, see, a soul, you can discuss a soul, you can uh, do that, but it's an inculcated, imbibed value that's within you that has born out of your conscience. So at the same time, I would say academically, we can make many more things, but as regards the practical point of view, performance that a soul is a soul, ethics is a soul, ethics can give birth, your own ethics can give birth to a soul, 
and when there will be many usool then they can create ethics also so that's uh, you know how we find around various principles in the quran they create ethics in us and at the same time out of your faith one may not be learned so much in these principles he can have ethics just because he goes to masjid in nabawi and when he goes to masjid nabawi he has a sight of the prophet he says my hunger is gone my desire is gone my greed is gone that's it is so there are how we can understand there are multiple ways of understanding this so allah bless you with this we now with this we now request professor zatam khan to deliver his presentation at आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है वी कैन नॉट हियर यू प्रोफेसर जगम खान साहब प्लीज ऑन म्यूट हेलो आ रही है आपकी आवाज अब आए वैल्यूज इन टर्म्स ऑफ looking them into the international code of medical ethics the moment let me first dissect a bit about the the title the international code of medical ethics the moment we call code it reflects arrangement secondly it reflects a formal arrangement thirdly it reflects the technique of operation and if we come to the values it is permanent it is moral it is precise it is evergreen so the value of value is far more in terms of its importance than the arrangement part of it secondly i would definitely like to see that the values give you a larger picture covering the whole humanity and code is giving you the details of arrangement and details of operation so operational arrangements are far inferior to the quranic or any kind of values that come to you second part i would like to see that quran as chairman was also insisting the dignity and welfare of man 
is the primary concern of Islam and the Quranic values are all full of it. So the West has given you the idea of welfare state while the Islamic philosophy gives you the idea of welfare society where family is very important, where moral fabric of the individual is very important. And these important points have been elaborated by the life sketches of all Sahaba Ikram all around. So you see the, the, the Quranic values are permanent and these are giving a new kind of a color to the International Code of Medical Ethics. It's not simply the International Code of Medical Ethics. It is Indian Constitution also that has got little elements of these values, particularly in the preamble part of it, where very loud values, very loud, lofty ideals, like that of equality, like that of liberty, like that of fraternity, social justice, and everything is enshrined. So I think if we, we take all of these together, then I can very safely conclude that Quranic values are permanent and these are reflective on all human activities at all levels. The, 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 the need of the hour is to assert for them and to point out that these values must really be looked into. And I think IOS has taken the task up and we are struggling very hard on these points just to save the constitution slogan or the constitutionalism part of it. We are all concerned and we are trying to uphold that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now I present the formal vote of thanks. I thank all of you who have participated in our 34th General Assembly meeting and also in this wonderful lecture given by Professor Mohammed Abdelwani. We all, or I on behalf of myself, on behalf of Chairman Institute of Objective Studies, Dr. Mohammed Mandur Alam, and on behalf of all the staff of uh, Institute of Objective Studies, I extend my heartiest thankful, uh, the thanks and thankfulness to all of you. You spare so much of time and remain with us this morning. So once again, I pay my thanks to all of you. Thank you very much. I also pay my thanks to our chairman who has given us time instead of his uh, not being available during these days, but he remained av available for yesterday also and today also. I pay my sincere thanks to him. I pay my sincere thanks from the core of my heart to whole staff of IS who is working tirelessly and who tried to make this event, make this uh, meeting a successful event. Thank you so much. Jazakallah. 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 And God bless you all. Thank you so much. Now, if uh, Rifai Saab is there, I think he is in the audience. He is there. If he is there, please, we want you to make a dua. We are waiting for you, Rifai Saab. If he is there. Yes. Then, uh, then I request Professor Fahim Akhtar Saab. Please, you have to take this responsibility. Thank you so much. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taqfil lana wa tarhamna lana kunan lami al-khasirin. Rabbana qfil lana zhrubana wa israfana fi yamlina wa thabit aqdamana wa nsulna ala al-qawmi al-kafirin. Ay Allah, is general assembly ke ajlas mein jo kuch koshishay hui hain 
जो लोगों ने हिस्सा लिया और इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ ऑब्जेक्टिव स्टडीज के कारकुनों ने जिम्मेदारों ने स्टाफ ने जो मेहनतें की हैं और तमाम शुरा की जानब से जो बातें कही गई हैं हिस्सा लिया गया उन सबको कबूल फरमा लीजिए और इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ ऑब्जेक्टिव स्टडीज के इन कामों को पूरे मुल्क के हक में पूरी मिलत के हक में और पूरी इंसानियत के हक में मुफीद बनाइए और अपनी खास कबूलियत और बरकत से नवाजिए इन कामों को आसान फरमा दीजिए इनको पूरी इंसानियत के हक में नाफे और फायदा मंद बना दीजिए अल्लाह तमाम कारकुनों तमाम जिम्मेदारों तमाम वाबस्तगान को अच्छी सेहत अदा फरमाइए इस पैंडमिक की सूरत हाल में उन सब की हिफाजत फरमाइए जो लोग अल्लाह बीमार हो गए हैं उनको शिफाए कामिला मुस्तमा और आदिना अदा फरमाइए जो गुजर गए हैं उनकी मकफरत फरमाइए अल्लाह जो लोग बाकी हैं उनकी उम्र में और कामों में बरकत अदा फरमाइए अल्लाह हर तरह की आसानियाँ पैदा फरमा दीजिए काम कर रहे हैं और काम के मनसूबे बना रहे हैं उनके जहनों में कुशादगी उनके दिलों में कुशादगी उनके वसाइल में कुशादगी पैदा फरमा दीजिए आपस में इतिहाद और इतफाक का माहौल कायम कर दीजिए मुल्क के अंदर अमन अमान की सूरत हाल पैदा फरमा दीजिए अल्लाह हम सबों को इस बात की तोफीक दीजिए कि मिलजुल कर पूरी इंसानियत के लिए उम्मत मुस्लिम के लिए और अपने मुल्क की भलाई के लिए खैर वफलाह बहबूद के लिए काम करते रहें और इन कामों को कबूलियत बख्शिए